Hey everyone and welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build this auto scrolling image gallery using SwiftUI and you're going to be able to swipe between the images yourself like this and you're going to be able to use these controls at the bottom to move backwards and forwards. So let's go ahead and get started and the first thing you need to do is create a new project, an app and I'm going to call mine image gallery and just make sure it's got SwiftUI under interface here and then you can click next and create. And we're going to be using the canvas a lot here. So just resume that and let's get straight into it. So the first thing we need to do is go to unsplash.com and download five images for our gallery. I downloaded the small ones because if you start to download these huge ones, you might have problems with the sliding animation on the first run through because of the way that it's trying to render the image. So just make sure you download the small ones and then head back to Xcode. And I've already downloaded them. So I'm gonna drag them into my assets.exe assets file here, like so. And we've just called them 01234 just to help uh, ease the coding a bit later. And we can now start to build out this image gallery. So let's say private var number of images is gonna be five. And in our body, we're gonna remove this text and we're going to have, rather surprisingly, a tab view. Now the reason we can use a tab view is because there is a style on tab view, which will allow us to have this paging effect with the indicators below. So we're gonna use this page tab view style and just pass it in like this. And then what we want to do is loop through our images from our assets. To do that, we're gonna have a for each which will be zero to less than the number of images. And then let's make an image here. And that's number is now gonna be a string for the image name. And what we need to do here is make this resizable. We then need to scale it to fill. And then we're gonna add a tag and this will become a bit clearer later. So this is the general setup of our tab view. And if we resume our canvas now, we can see that we get something. We get these indicators at the bottom showing us how many photos there are, and we get this image. And if we run the preview now, you can see that it does actually go through the images here, but it looks pretty bad. So let's fix this up a bit. And what we're going to do is use a geometry reader which is going to allow us to calculate the width and height here. So you want to wrap your tab view in a geometry reader. And then we're going to take the proxy and we're going to set the frame on our tab view here so that the width is going to be our proxy.size.width, which will be basically the whole width of the screen here. And our height we're going to make this proxy.size.height divided by three. So it will take up a third of the screen on whatever device you're running it on. And then we don't need this alignment because it's centered by default. And this will give us a reasonably nice image gallery already. And then what we're going to do is apply some padding so it's nicely indented. So let's come under our tab view style. And we're going to have some padding. Let's just take the standard padding. And we want to round the corners here. So we're gonna say clip shape. And the shape we wanna clip it with is the rounded rectangle with a corner radius of say five. And what we can do now is actually add an overlay so that we can see the page indicators a bit more clearly. So we're gonna add that on the image itself. And it's going to be dot overlay under scale to fill color dot black dot opacity uh, and then you can choose your own opacity, 0.4 is probably all right. And if we resume this now, you can see that these dots are a lot clearer. So let's actually just run this on a real device, not the iPod Touch. Let's try the Pro Max here. And this looks decent and it's got a nice animation there. And you can see the amount of code is not much at all. So that's our image gallery, which is static, where we have to change it ourselves. So what we can do now is add an actual timer. So we're gonna to come to the top of our content view here, 
and we're going to define a timer. So you can set this to go off however often you want. I'm going to try three seconds on the main run loop here in dot common. Um, and then we're going to say auto connect. And don't worry too much about this, but it basically means that every three seconds we're going to trigger this timer. So we need something that will help us receive this timer. So we're going to use something on our tab view called on receive. And this publisher is going to be our timer here. So every time this is triggered, we want to set the page to be the next image. So let's come up here and define an at state private var current index. We'll set it at zero to start with. And what we're gonna do is actually calculate whether we need to increment this or whether we need to set it back to zero, because if we get to the end, we want to change it back to zero. So let's say the current index is gonna be equal to if the current index is less than the number of images, then we're gonna increment it by one, else we're gonna set it to zero. So now, every time the timer is triggered, we'll increment the index or we'll set it back to the start. So let's resume this and run our preview and see what happens. So every three seconds it should change. And there's one thing I forgot, and that is to set the actual selection on the tab view as the current index. So there we go, you can see it's starting to have an effect here. So every three seconds the image changes, but there's no animation. So in order to get the animation, we're gonna wrap our index change in a with animation. And now on the right, you can see that it's actually animating this. And the final part of this video, we are going to introduce some controls to increment or decrement this uh, image gallery. So let's say var controls, some view, and this is going to be an H stack, which will have two buttons. And we're gonna have button with an action, and then the label is gonna be just an image, which will be image, system name, chevron dot left. And we're gonna have another button with chevron dot right. And the logic for when they tap on the left or right is going to be similar to what we had here. So we can copy this and put this in our right button because this is going to be incrementing so it'll have the same logic and on our left button where we want to decrement we actually want to check if the current index is more than zero then do current index minus one otherwise we're going to set it to the number of images minus one so if they're in position zero it will move them to the last position here. And let's go ahead and tidy this up a bit so we can move this into its own method. This will be the left tap. So we want to make this one be previous. And we'll have one for next as well. So on the left tap, we're gonna have a call to previous. And on the right tap here, we are going to have a call to next. And also we can do this in our timer block here. So this is going to be next. And we need to wrap these index changes in with animation blocks. So we get that nice sliding animation. And then we're just gonna realign And that should be it. So let's add our controls to our tab view here. And what we're gonna do is wrap our tab view in a V stack. And then we're gonna add the controls at the bottom of the V stack underneath the tab view here. And now if we resume our preview here, we can see that we have these controls, they go right and they go left. And let's 
change the color of these controls because they're blue due to the buttons here. And we can do that by just saying dot accent color on our H stack to dot primary. And this will reflect whatever mode you're in. And then in between the buttons with the final touch, we can have a spacer with a frame width of 100. And there we go. There's our finished image gallery. We can just run this in dark mode to get a good idea of what we've built. So it triggers every three seconds. You can move it and it will remember what index it on and then increment it, go back to the beginning. You can move it back to the end here and you can move forwards as well. So there we go. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what can be built very quickly with SwiftUI. And if you like this video, please do give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you for the next